Hello, and welcome to Empathy Here, Not There, the podcast where we explore the role of empathy in various aspects of our lives. I'm your host, Curtis Camponi, founder of Speak for MC and author of Cape Conversations, now on Amazon. Today, we're going to dive into a critical and often controversial topic, empathy in politics. Oh! In a time of intense polarization and division, understanding and practicing empathy can be a powerful tool for bridging gaps and fostering constructive dialogue. Defining empathy in politics can be tricky and difficult. Look, empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another person. In politics, empathy involves recognizing the experiences, emotions, and perspectives of people who have different views or different backgrounds. Empathy doesn't mean agreeing with everyone. It means valuing their humanity and striving to see the world through their eyes. This is a big misconception. You do not need to agree with someone in order to empathize with them. You don't need to sacrifice your morality in order to empathize with them. You don't need to condone their behaviors in order to empathize with them. You just have to strive to see the world through their lens. This approach can lead to more inclusive and compassionate policymaking. Let's look at some examples in the history of politics where there's a little bit of empathy. Throughout history, we have seen leaders who have embodied empathy in their political careers. One notable example is Nelson Mandela. Despite being in prison for 27 years, Mandela emerged with a message of collaboration and understanding, rather than a message of vengeance. His empathy towards his former oppressors played a crucial role in South Africa's transition back to democracy. Another example is FDR, whose New Deal policies during the Great Depression were driven by an understanding of the struggles faced by ordinary Americans. His fireside chats were an attempt to connect with the public on a personal level, showing empathy through direct communication. Look, this podcast isn't about debating you on policy. It's about taking an empathetic approach to understand how we got here with said policy. It's also about the bipartisan efforts to find common ground. Let's look at some other examples of politicians finding common ground and working across party lines. Did you know when practicing empathy, parties are twice as likely to find common ground compared to standard mediation? Let's look at the Affordable Care Act or the ACA. Despite being a highly partisan issue, the ACA saw moments of bipartisan cooperation. When I say moments, focusing on aspects that address the needs of their constituents. They were able to find common ground on some areas. Another example is the First Step Act. This criminal justice reform bill aimed at reducing recidivism and reforming sentencing laws passed with overwhelming bipartisan support. It was another example of Republicans and Democrats working together to address the systematic issues in the justice system. Another example, the No Child Left Behind Act. This education reform bill was co-sponsored by Republican President George Bush and Democratic Senator Tim Kennedy. Their collaboration highlighted how empathy for students' educational needs can transcend political divides. I'm not necessarily here to dive in and see if these decisions were correct. The point is, is when you are codependent on someone and you have to collaborate with them, you have to start with a foundation of empathy so that you can both find common ground and work from there. Empathy in politics can manifest in various relationships, each with its own unique dynamics and challenges. For example, empathy towards constituents. Politicians must understand and address the concerns of the people they represent. This involves listening to their needs, fears, and aspirations. An empathetic politician will prioritize policies that improve their constituents' lives, even if it means going against party lines. To connect with your base, you have to understand your base. You have to be willing to listen to them as they express their concerns that are unique to them. In other words, can politicians hear stories from multiple people's perspectives, even if these stories sound similar? Can they listen to them like it's the first time they've ever heard them? What about politicians when working with their colleagues? Working with colleagues across the aisle requires recognition of their perspective and, again, finding common ground. Empathy can help build trust and facilitate cooperation. By understanding the motivations and constraints of their colleagues, politicians can craft more effective, inclusive legislation. In other words, when they're more likely to demonstrate empathy, they're more likely to get stuff done. Can we suspend our ego in the spirit of finding a solution that there's some common ground and we can work towards. This happens abroad as well. Empathy towards leaders, both domestic and international, involves acknowledging their challenges and their viewpoints. This can lead to more productive negotiations and collaborations. For example, bipartisan foreign policy efforts also require empathy to understand the global context and stakes involved for all of the parties. Empathy in politics means I understand my way of life, 
but am I willing to suspend that to understand theirs? And like with anything, there's a dark side of empathy in politics. While empathy is a powerful tool for good, it can also be misused in politics for less noble purposes. Manipulative empathy. Politicians might use empathetic language and gestures to manipulate public emotions, creating sympathy for themselves or their agendas without genuinely addressing the underlying issues. This can lead to superficial solutions that don't actually solve the problems, but merely appease to the public temporarily. What about selective empathy? Showing empathy selectively to certain groups while ignoring or marginalizing others do nothing but further create divides. This selective empathy can create an illusion of care and concern while neglecting those who are most in need. By empathizing only with their base and not with the opposition, politicians can deepen political divides, leading to an increased polarization and a lack of willingness to find that common ground. Empathy can also be used as a political tool. Empathy can be used as a form of window dressing. Politicians may display empathy in public to create a favorable image without committing to meaningful action. This can be a tactic to distract from the actual policies or to mitigate backlash. Additionally, empathy can be used to deflect criticism or accountability. For example, a politician might express understanding and concern for a controversial issue without taking concrete steps to address it, thereby pacifying critics without making any real changes. Still, there are some real benefits of empathy in politics. Despite the potential for misusing empathy in politics, it definitely holds tremendous potential for positive change. By genuinely understanding and valuing the experiences of others, politicians can create inclusive policies. Empathy-driven policies consider the diverse needs of all constituents, leading to more inclusive outcomes. Empathetic leaders build trust. They build trust with their constituents and their colleagues, fostering a cooperative and supportive political environment. Empathy promotes unity. Empathy can bridge divides and reduce polarization, encouraging a more united and collaborative society. So let's talk about some practical tips that can cultivate empathy in politics. How can we do it? How can we make it happen? One, active listening. Truly listen to understand, not just to respond. Pay attention to the emotions and experiences behind people's words. Engage with diverse perspectives. Seek out and engage with people who have different viewpoints. This can broaden your understanding and challenge your assumptions. Share personal stories. Sharing your own experiences and listening to other stories can humanize abstract political issues and foster a deeper connection. Promote civil discourse. Encourage respectful and constructive conversations both online and offline. Set an example by showing empathy in your interaction. Empathy takes two to tango, but one to take the lead. Someone has to initiate it. Let's challenge our political leaders to do that. Look, empathy in politics is not just about understanding and sharing feelings. It's about using that understanding to create positive change. While empathy can be misused, its true power lies in the ability to foster inclusive, compassionate, and effective governance. By being mindful of both the positive and negative uses of empathy, we can build a more united and just society. I invite any state elected officials who are interested in discussing the role of empathy in politics to join me on this podcast. I've already reached out to some local elected officials, and if you're one and I didn't reach out to you yet, Curtis at speakformc.com. Our goal is to make this conversation a collaborative one. If you're interested, email me, let me know, and we can make it happen. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Empathy Here, Not There. If you found this discussion valuable, please subscribe and follow the podcast. Let's interact in the comment section in a way that demonstrates that empathy can happen in social media. I'm Curtis Camponi, and remember, empathy starts here, not there, or does it? See y'all on the next episode.